Welcome. In this video, I'll show you how I made this 12 volt DC speed controller for motors which can easily handle up to 100 watts of power. The module uses very simple and easy to obtain components and the cost for making the entire module is not that much. It uses powerful MOSFET to control the speed of the motors using pulse width modulation technology. It also features a low voltage cutoff in case you are using the module from a battery. Let's get building. These are all the components required to make the module. The detailed list of the components will be in the link which I'll provide in the video description below. Let us now have a look at the circuit diagram of the project, which I designed in Eagle and later exported as an image. The LM317 is a linear voltage regulator, the output of which can be adjusted using this 10 kilo ohm potentiometer. Here I've set the output voltage as 10.5 volts which is enough to drive the gate of the MOSFETs and also to power the NE555 and the LM358. For my project, I've used the IR3205 MOSFETs as my switches. The NE555 is the heart of the project which generates the pulse sequence from pin 3, the duty cycle of which can be varied from 5% all the way up to 95% using this 100k potentiometer. To implement the low voltage cutoff feature, I've used the LM358 as a comparator which compares the steady 5 volts from the AMS1117 with the threshold voltage which can be set from the 20k potentiometer which is directly connected to the input of our module. Now as soon as the voltage goes below the threshold of 5 volts, the comparator activates which in turn activates the BC547 transistor and pulls the reset pin of the NE555 low. This in turn deactivates the pulses from pin 3 and the system turns off. Before I went ahead to solder all the components on the Vero board, I first thought of trying out the PWM circuit on a breadboard to evaluate the waveforms. So I assembled the 555 circuit along with all the components to check the waveforms and the PWM duty cycle on my oscilloscope. And as you can see, as I turn the potentiometer, the duty cycle of the pulses changes. The, rough, the frequency of the pulses is approximately 7 kHz. It is a good practice to roughly determine the placement of the components on the Vero board such that the relevant components are placed close by which enables us to use minimal jumper wires making our circuit neat and tidy. The next step is to drill the holes for fixing the entire circuit with the enclosure. For this, I marked the position of the holes using a permanent marker and later used a drill to make the holes so that the entire circuit can be fixed with the enclosure using screws and nuts. The next section is about soldering all the PWM oscillator components onto the breadboard and after successfully soldering all the components, this is what the module looks like. Next, I went ahead and soldered all the components for the low voltage cutoff feature. The LM358 acts as a comparator which compares the 5 volt from the EMS1117 to the threshold voltage which we can set from the 20k potentiometer. As soon as the voltage goes below the threshold voltage, the comparator activates and the PWM signal stops.
The next group of components to be soldered is the LM317 adjustable voltage regulator to which I have set an output voltage of 10.5 volts which is required to drive the gate of the MOSFETs and also to adequately power up the NE555 timer and the LM358 comparator. The next components to be soldered is the power MOSFET along with a 100 ohm current limiting gate resistor and a 10 kilo ohm pull down resistor. I have also soldered the 100 kilo ohm potentiometer to vary the duty cycle along with the module. With all the components connected and soldered in place, it was now time to add the input and the output power wires. Finally, let us securely attach the entire module with the enclosure with the help of screws and nuts. I have used a couple of extra nuts to provide the space between the base of the enclosure and the Vero board to avoid any kind of false contact. And after closing the upper lid and securing it with screws as well, the module is finally complete. I hope you like this project. Feel free to share your feedbacks in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next one.